and the world's biggest doctor. Thank you, Tom. This is the man of the Hallelujah. Ain't the Lord good to see you? He's worthy of all praise. We can all agree that he could have used more this evening from each and every one of us, including myself. And uh, we love him. We're glad to be here tonight. We really are. We we honor you, Pastor. We honor the, all the saints of God that's in here. Pastor's wife. I want to honor my wife this evening. I'm glad she's with me. Didn't think she may get to come. We had a couple kids sick, but... Everything worked out, and she's with me. I, I love when you think nobody's there praying for you. If you've got a good, godly woman, she's praying for you. She says she's there praying for you. Saying, you know, my daddy, he, he preached, he's still preaching, but he, my mommy never did. She was sick and never did go to church with him and uh, things like that. So he didn't get to, he didn't get to witness that of her, but uh, she was a good woman. She really was, but you know what? We all got to go by the same word. We all got to go by the same word and live by the book the way we should. We can say all the good things about people that we want to. We can see them at their deathbed and hear them say, I love Jesus. But if we all don't go the one same way, we ain't going to get there. I, I'm a firm believer in the one way. I am because if you got any other way to go in, I believe the Bible teaches that you're a thief and a robber. You can't go in but just through Jesus. That's the only way. And, that's, and he taught us how to get in there. But we love all of you. I'm glad you're here tonight. And, and we, we thank you for your time because your time's important. You could have chose to do something else this evening. Worked in the garden, did something for somebody else. Just You could, but we're glad you're here tonight. We love you and we thank you. And we, the Lord has put a message on our heart and uh, we're going to share it with you. I studied it a while back and it's on my heart. It's, a, it, it's familiar to me because I preach on it a lot, but it's the most nervous message is that message that I preach because I I love Jesus and when I come to find what I really needed in my life this is what come to me and I I love preaching it and I love teaching it because Jesus is the one who give it to me and uh, I want to share it with you this evening and do the best that we can and you know, we can, we, uh, but it's been mentioned a lot here this evening, but we love you. And, and uh, I want you to turn to 1 John chapter 3 and 23. 1 John chapter 3 and 23. I believe in keeping these commandments, don't you? He's a good God, and this is something that uh, is going to see us through. First John chapter 3 and 23, you got to say amen. amen. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God you may be seated we love him this evening he's a good God give him a hand clap give him a hand clap he's a good God I believe that's going to get us through. And the, the, the title that he gave me on this was Love One Another. We need to love one another. It's not a very, it's not a very uh, popular message. A lot of people don't like it. Man, we can make them shout. We can, I mean, the Lord can bring through us on all kinds of things. But it seems like when we start hitting on love, 
When we start hitting on love, people sit down on you. People, the hand will go down. They, they just don't like love. Very good love ain't a very, maybe not be a running message sometimes. Love takes time. It takes time to love somebody. And we just, we want to read, I wrote all these scriptures down. If you, if you study the word and something means something to you, write it down. Get you a book and write it down. And that'll help you remember it and that'll help you see it. Get a visual on it and your hand be doing what's good for God. And whatever you find yourself doing, your hand do it, do it with all your might. Take and just write it down on something so you can go back to it and love it. But love is going to take us through all things. I'm going to turn over here to 1 Peter 3 and it, it says, Above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. This is the word of God this evening. To love one another and bring it and come. And when we find this love and get this love, Ma, I found love in Jesus. I did. I left a place that was fighting and bickering and calling Brother David and I didn't come to Jesus to enter into more fighting, bickering, and calling. I come to Jesus to find freedom. And there's freedom and he told us to love one another. Now for some of us I'll tell you what love will do. Love sometimes might have to put up a dirty lid. Love sometimes might have to put up with a word that's out of place. Love sometimes might have to put up with somebody going outside in the parking lot and talking about you but love's going to keep you praise be to God of preaching the word standing on the word testifying singing your song love's going to carry you all the way through everything that the devil can throw at you and that the devil can try to put under your feet and trip you with this love for one another is going to keep us together in unity this love for one another is going to have us to stand and hold our brother and our sister up in a time praise be to God that we look around and we say everything is wrong but let me tell you something the word is right the word's right it's the only thing going to get us there and this love for one another is going to bring us together in this one self same spirit this book that we read that everybody got King James version don't you you better have anything else I don't believe in it's a lie I just want the King James Version. I believe it's the closest, and I believe it's right on the... I'll tell you where God wants us to live. It brought us the Holy Ghost. It brought us Jesus' name, baptism. It brought us everything we need. But I'm telling you, we need to get a love for one another. We can repent. We can be baptized. We can be filled with the Holy Ghost. But if we don't get a love for one another, the way God said to do it, He had a love that walked up a hill one day for the thing. He had a love to shed His blood out. If we don't get the love down in our hearts for one another, we ain't going to make it to this beautiful place called heaven. We must love one another. And look, I'm telling you, hold each other out there. It does, what is it going to matter the dirty look every now and then when we take and when we can just love one another and just be able to go over and say somebody's got to be bigger than the other and wrap their arms around them and say I love you. It don't matter I told you last night. You can't do enough to me to make me hate you. There's a love in me, praise be to God, that's overcoming this world. And if love is going to overcome the world, praise be to God, you hate me to the world to come. This love, this love that we're going to talk about here, it's what it's going to take. John, it's just way the Lord gave it to me. I wrote it down. John 13, 34 says, A new commandment. I give you that you love one another. Uh-huh. And I have loved love one another, and I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35 says, By this shall all men know. This is what got me. All men know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one for another. That's if you want to be separate, brother. You can take and wear all the different types of clothes you want. But you can put that on and if you've got a strong nose for your brother or sister. If you've got some, I'm telling you, she is in between a brother and sister. If you don't love one another, praise be to God. He said this is how you're going to know. Praise be to God. They're going to know that you're my disciples. This is how I'm going to pick you out. This is how they're going to know. You're going to love one another. Praise be to God. We go up there to that church. Oh, you can just feel it when you walk in the house. There's a love for one another. 
God. We've got to have the, I tell you, the spirits are strong when the lost comes in. When those in trouble come in, if we got this love for one another, they're going to come in half empty, but they're going to leave them. They're going to go in poor down. They're going to build them up. It's going to take this love for one another to get that one. Amen. If ever nurse down our camp was hunted, went against one another. Come on. They ain't nobody gonna be taken care of. Amen. They ain't. Amen. Well, I don't put the needle in like that. Yeah, come on. I don't. The needle's gonna go in anyway. Yeah. Come on. We got a plan for them. Amen. That's what's gonna bring this unity. I have, a, I have a desire for unity. Unity, a desire for unity. Not just for you to look at me and say I love you. Not only in word and in tongue. Uh -huh. Not only in word and in tongue. Uh -huh. I ain't just talking about that. Man, I come to your house and I help you. And man, I tell you these yes. things. I can do this. But I tell word, and not in word and in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. When I'm there and I help you and then I go off and bicker about it. And so, man, I've wasted my whole Saturday helping so-and-so. I wasted this. You you were doing it for Jesus. You did your Saturday prayer and you think you do it. You need to do things with a pure heart. God sees a pure heart. Yeah, you help them out. We need good old boys, but I was telling you something. To have a pure heart and to do things with a love that's unfeigned and to do things with a love, praise be to God, like Jesus did, it's going to get you through it. Through it. Yes. Only through and by Him are we going to make it. And that's through this love. Through this love. This is Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Why can't we love thy neighbor as thyself? It's not he even give us a parable enough to explain who this neighbor was. Talking about the one that fell among the thieves and they was and they took him ready. I'm telling you, they beat him. They took him ready to kill him, left him laying right there. And there's a priest went on one side of him. Praise be to God, and a Levite on the other. But here come a good old Samaritan. And when it comes down to the end of the story, poured his oil and his wine, put it in his cup, put him up on his own beast, took him to get him taken care of. Praise be to God. And told him to paint the man and give him some more. And said, If I owe you anything when I come back through for you taking care of it, I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to pay you for it. Praise be to God. When he comes to the end of Jesus said, Who? Who? Amen. Who showed here? That was his neighbor. Come on, come on, brother. The one that showed mercy. The one that showed mercy. That's who it is. We need to be the neighbor. If everybody in here tried to be the neighbor, we love one another. Love one another. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We'll learn how to truth. We don't smack around on ourselves, do we? We don't look in the mirror and cuss ourselves or talk mean to ourselves. We need to love one another as ourselves. I'll tell you, and take and just get over me. Get over it. Love will get you coming to church with a bar. Yeah. A bar. Love will take you through it. Come on. Not around it. Amen. Love, people think this is weak. Love is. Love is the strongest thing. Love is what created the world. Yeah. Love is what created it. Love is the one that gives you the mercy that you have today that you ain't already been stoned to death yeah. and took and put under. I tell you, love this love. That we have today, which is in Christ Jesus, being in Him. We all, we claim to be in Him. Love one another. I come tonight to, I want a fire to be built in you. I study love. I pray, Lord, I want to love. I want to love them as I want them to love me. I want to love. That's 
that's what's going to get us through it. And in love is what it hides them. The Bible teaches you right there that it hides this multitude of sin. It does, Brother Dave. You know, I'm telling you, if it come down to it, Brother Larry said a bunch of stuff to me just because I showed him love and didn't wrap a bunch of stuff back, what sins did it take and hide? Right there. And then for him, I'm telling you, we, somebody's got to be alive. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to praise be to God. Humble themselves before God and show the love that's needed. Amen. Do you know what we do when we get real good in love? We'll see them fall. We'll do our part and then we'll talk about them. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. Well, I did my part, didn't I? How many have you heard that? Oh, come on. I did my part. Amen. That's all I needed to do. Uh -huh. And you go tell every little body that they told something about you too. I'm telling you, I did my part. Amen. I've been come guilty on, of it. I ain't preaching nothing. I ain't done myself. Come on. I'll admit it tonight. I've been there, but I'm growing. Come I'm on. getting things right. I'm getting things right. How many can say I'm getting things right? I ain't worried about it. I'm worried about it. I want to take care of it tonight. Look and examine our lives every morning throughout the day and watching our mouth. You know everything you say and every other word, you're going to be judged for it one day. It's going to happen. I've learned that the less you say, the less you're going to be held accountable for it. on that day. Keep your trap shut. Praise be to God. If it ain't the end of power and the build up, Mommy used to say, praise be to God. If you ain't got nothing to say, This was hard for me at one time. I'm sure there's some sitting in here under the sound of my voice that it's hard for. Are they ashamed of that? No, there's a shame that you ain't doing nothing about. That's right. There's a shame that you ain't studying the book and, and that you ain't worried about the way you talk to your brother and sister. When you can lay down and sleep good at night but and you talk to your brother and sister the way you did. They talked about them the way you did. I've been guilty. Come on. I ain't preaching you nothing that I ain't already went through. It's the truth tonight. And lay down and just thought I did God a service. Paul thought he was doing God a service by killing them. Praise be to God. He was going by the same word that they was going by. But praise be to God. He got struck down. I pray he gets struck down tonight. By love and that your eyes be open. Praise be to God. To how we need to love one another. Yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. I love Baptize the boy in Jesus' name. I went to the home church. They come up. She's your last one. Make it your best one. It's your last one. That one raised up. We believe in three around here. I went and sat on my seat. You know what went through my mind? You know enough word to cut them up right here. You've been studying. You know I'm God. You know Jesus' name, baptism's right. When I got up behind the pulpit, he fixed my eyes on a lost man in there. <laughs> it ain't the place. It ain't the place. I preached one of the prettiest love messages I believe ever preached in my life for that night. God, if you let God take control, but flesh wanted to cut. Flesh was hurt. Flesh was hurt, but that spirit in our city, that's why I need to let that overflow, Stephen. That spirit rose up in me and put my focus upon what was really important. It wasn't that you just got hurt, Jr. It wasn't that they're going against my word. I'm here tonight for that man back yonder. I'm here tonight to show up to give him some love, to show him that I got on a cross and give my blood that he can be made free tonight. You got to get over yourself, Jr. You got to get over yourself. It ain't about you. It's about them. He come to seek and save. Tonight. I tell you, we gotta get over ourselves. Amen. Amen. Don't work for Jesus. Come on. I'm just gonna go through this. Mind the Lord. Right. <coughs> Ephesians. I love him. If you don't like this tonight, I'm telling you. I hope 
we sit one through it. And I hope Brother Farr build up in you. I do. For your brother, for your sister. Ephesians 4. Says, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Beseech means to beg. I'm begging you. Paul's begging them here. Vocation is your calling. Listen, loneliness is humbleness of mind. To be humbleness of mind. Meekness is gentleness. Gentleness. Meekness. Jesus was gentle. Jesus went through everything. We can look and see that he was smote upon, spit upon, stripped naked. He was shamed before him. But he held. He didn't revile back. He didn't tell them how wrong they was. He didn't just start preaching what, what he knowed. He didn't just stand it up. He lived it. He lived it. Here's how I want you to be. How do you think the apostles went plumb to death? They seen him, Brother David. They seen him walk up the hill. Knowing that he had all power, both in heaven and earth. They were standing there when he said, I have been given all power, both in heaven and in earth. He, they were standing there. They heard him say that. Praise be to God. I'm telling you, he, that, they know he had all power. They know the revelation that Peter got over there. They know what he said. But here they went all the way for Jesus. All the way. Why not us? Why can't we do it? Why can't when somebody reviles us, why can't we hold our peace? We need to get this flesh under control. I want to build a fire in you to get this under control. To get it under control. Build a fire. Why can't we hold our peace? Why can't we? Why can't we hold our peace? Oh, but they ain't holding theirs. It's not an eye for an eye no more. Not a tooth for a tooth no more. It's not give a railing for a railing. Praise be to God. It's to be humble and meek and do what Jesus asked. Amen. Long suffering, having or showing patience in spite of troubles. Especially those caused by other people. Yeah. Having it, having long suffering yes. toward people. I'm waiting on them. Or some, I'm waiting on them. I'm waiting on them to be delivered. When I go to church, that's what I pray for. Lord, I'm waiting on their deliverance tonight. I want them delivered. You know the, the ones that went out and looked over the wheat and the tares and they noticed that the tares was growing up and they went and asked, do you want us to go pluck them up? You spoke about all this. He said, no, but I'm telling you. But here's the thing. The servants recognized the tares. That's the thing. See, the servants know the tares that's in there. The pastor knows the tares. It ain't no secret. You ain't hiding nothing. But the thing of it is, we're just awaiting the tares. Night for that old tire to bow its head and become like the wheat. To become, that's what we're waiting on, Brother Larry. We're waiting on for this to get enough Jesus to bow your head down and be humble and be patient and be meek like he was. That's what we're waiting on. That's why we're all suffering to see you make it in love. In love. This is how we're going to make it. For bearing. Put up with, bear with, endure. Suffer. We might have to suffer some yeah. hard things. We might have to suffer. Those that's got Facebook, you don't have to see it all the time. You can click that thing off. You don't have to see what they said about you after church. You don't have to see what they said about your song you sung. You don't have to see it. You can push, delete Facebook out of my life. Amen. And you can get rid of that part. And you can come to church made free again. I don't care what I'm telling you. I can't I'm tell you. I want people to like me and to love me. But when it comes down to that, I just don't want to know about it, Brother Larry. I tell people, there'll be people sometimes see me and they'll take a picture of what's on Facebook about our church or this and that. And they'll send it to me. Don't you send me that junk no more. I don't need nothing in my mind when I come to those people to talk to them that they've done for me for the Bible to work with. You don't need that in your life. Amen. You want to go to them with pure love. Amen. Pure love. You don't want to have to fight with all that junk before you get to them. You want to go to them with pure love. Yeah. They got so many oh. Facebook messages behind the full pulpit anymore. They get on Facebook see what everybody's doing so they get a message. It's the truth. It is about everything. And I know you can preach, man. I'm telling you, if I preach it like that and just hit it right on the nail, then he couldn't. So, how do you know that? 
I'll tell you something, most of them, they got Facebook with you. They got Facebook, they know everything you do. They tell you how many times you wash your car. Tell you how many times you and your husband went out to the store. It's the truth. We need to get back to this. I want the messages to come through that I know God give the men of God. God give it to them. They skipped my limbs off. They didn't know nothing about me. I want them kind of messages coming through. Praise be to God that people know that God was in the arrangements of it coming that night for them. For them. Endeavoring. Try hard to do or achieve something. This is a trying way. We gotta try hard, Stephen. We've got to press to get this love right. We do, man. It should this should really be something that we're born with. I ain't talking about in the flesh. That's what's in the way. I'm talking about when you're born again of the Spirit. This ought to be, but the things people's got pounding, the things they look upon, and the things that they see, and the things that they hear people say, and they, it gets them, they're fighting with the true love that's supposed to be in them. Why? Because they see those with true love that's supposed to be, and that's why they can do it, I can do it. No, you can't. You better be studying your word. Like we said, that's not making yourself ready of learning, praise be to God, how to handle that situation, to love that brother or sister, to see them through it. It ought to be a sad time. It ought to be a sad time. It ought not be a time to sit down and gather around with your little clique and say something about one another or talk about the preacher. if you just grab a hold of me and take me to the back and say let's talk about all this oh, yeah. I feel much better yep. than have to hear it down the road somewhere right. oh you know that right. message that you preached up there at Woodville this and it like that and said this about this and said that about oh. that don't bother me a bit I'll come right on back and preach on and well I'll tell you brother oh, Larry, you can when you can look your enemy in the eye and hug them around the neck and kiss them on the cheek praise be to God you talking about power in your life when the devil takes your temper praise be to God he's got you when he takes and takes your long suffering he's got you the devil's got more people praise be to God in the house of God and they don't even realize it. the devil has to remember to shield it to the devil your temper is yours the way your self control is yours you've got to have control over that through the spirit of God but when the devil's got it, he's going to use it. He's going to use it. We're at right here. Come on. Right here. Yep. He, ain't, he ain't worried about the drunk down the road. He's got him. Uh -huh. He ain't worried about that one over here smoking pot and doing this and that. He's got them. Right here is where he wants to use it. Oh, yeah. In the house of God. I want them to show themselves right here. Yep. Right here. It kills a whole bunch. Oh, it kills a whole bunch. It goes ahead and does the work. But praise be to God, I thank for the ones that press, don't you? I thank God for the ones that press. Why? Because we want to see this done right. And in love. I, this love is going to take us, church. Unity. The state of being united or joined as a whole. One. Becoming one yeah, in this self, this self same love yep. that works all the gifts, that has all the fruits. It's going to take this love. If me and my wife didn't love each other at home, I couldn't imagine being in that house. I'm telling you, I couldn't imagine being in that house. It takes love. To, I'm telling you, sometimes to endeavor some things that you got to go through, even at your own house, it takes love. Wow. It's going to take it. Why? Because love don't want to hurt you. Love don't want to see you do wrong. Love don't want to see you. It ain't self-seeking. It don't take you. It ain't puffed up. Love is everything that you need tonight. Amen. Everything. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love, one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness, before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints. He's going to establish your hearts. But we need this love toward one another to be able to have these hearts established. Yes. It's, this is, it's going to be established this 
way, Brother Larry. How am I going to know you, my disciples? Because we love one another. It is. It shouldn't be nothing uncommon for me to go up to my brother, plumb out in public, and don't even know nobody around, but I'll hug his neck and kiss his cheek. If that's what the Lord puts on me, praise be to God, and love one another. They must go to church together. They must, praise be to God, just be real close. I tell you, we ought to be known and seen for these things. Amen. What are they going to think about? What are they going to think? You heard something about them down the road. You're doing that. Things going on today is when we hear about somebody getting saved, we'll start digging up their past. Come on. Come on. Come on. Or somebody will come to you. Man, you know what they've done. I know they went to Auburn and everything. And I'd hate to say it this way. Or I'd hate to do it like this. I can't stand that. I'd hate to do it this way. But they did this and they did that. They was married this many times. They had this many women or men. I don't want to hear that garbage. Jesus said clean. Jesus said clean. Clean. You're clean. You're clean. That don't need to be in our ears. We don't need to have that. Praise be to God. When we see them stand and testify. Makes it hard on everybody. It does. It does. That's the first thing, just like Brother David said last night, I believe it was. Digging in blood. Yep. Jesus' blood is already on it. Trying to get it out of there. I like that. Uh-huh. I did. I don't like old blood handlers like that. Come on. I don't. I'm getting rid of it tonight. Come on. God's good, ain't he? Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. Listen. First lesson is 4 9. But it's touching brotherly love, you need not. That I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God. This is how we're taught. Is of God to love one another. There's things that we preach shouldn't even have to be preached. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shouldn't even have to be preached. Why should we have to preach we need to love one another? Why should we have to preach these things on how to dress? Why should we have these preach these things? Don't be a cussing. Why should we have to preach on these things? The Word of God, we learn it from God in the Word. Yeah. It's right in there. Yeah. We need to study, but we get our eyes on the big big thing right out yonder called the world. And we see everybody else that sits in one of these buildings right like this, are doing all these ungodly things. And we start feasting off of it. We start wanting to get in with the harlot just a little bit. It's the truth. We want to sit down with her just a little bit. We want to be just like that just a little bit. But praise be to God. God called you out of her. Called you out of her. To separate you. To make him a peculiar people. Somebody that he set aside for himself. My wife is mine. She's nobody else's. He wants a wife that he is. Nobody else's. Keeping his command. Loving him the way he loved you. And loving one another the way he loved you. And showing. That's what he wants. Lord God. I love him. I hope I'm helping you. I'm just minding the Lord. Hebrews Hebrews 10. 24 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. We should be provoking one another unto this love and to do good works. He did. He come and he, he set us out. He was self apart of zealous people. Zealous of good works. Zealous of doing these things. Zealous means there's one of them synonyms they call it fanatical. To be plumb fanatical about his works and about the goodness that you can show and do for Just like the night you got saved. You want to tell everybody that you got saved what something happened to you. You can't explain it, but it happened. And you know there's a change made in your life. What happened to that night? Somebody said, I believe not. You need your first love. You need to get back to your first love. Don't let nothing corrupt your first love. Don't let something get in there and take that first love from you. It's yours. It's yours. That's what you need. That load that was lifted. And you're so heavy now. Come on, brother. So heavy now. Jesus didn't put that on you. He didn't put that on you. The same love that he had for you then is the same love he's got for you now. 
He didn't put that load upon you. He said, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, I'm meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. Jesus ain't somebody that comes out and loads you down with a bunch of stuff that you can't handle. Amen. He's a good God that loves you. The cross was laid on his back. The burden of the sins was upon his shoulders. He bore them all for you. He bore them so you could be made free and walk through this life in assurity that somebody paid the cost. Somebody paid the price that you could be made free tonight. Amen. And it's in this love right here. This same love. I love him. Provoke means to stir, motivate, excite, inflame. It's what we should be doing with one another. It's getting this excitement in them for church once again. Uh -huh. Some people don't even want to come to church anymore. I don't want to go up tonight. And it's just so hard. If you find it hard for you to start coming to church, you need to be up here. Amen. Come Please. On. I'm begging you. I've been there before. I told you I ain't preaching you nothing where I ain't been. I've been to times that I didn't want to be at church. Stuff going on and stuff happening. And just hard to get here. You need to be coming praying. You need to be on the altar. That ain't a state of mind. That ain't a heart that we need to have. We need to always be excited to enter into the house of God. We need to always be excited and be ready to see somebody change. I come. You know, it's, it's a miracle night. Every church night is a miracle night. It's something, what's going to happen in her heart? What's going to happen in his heart? What's going to happen tonight for that one that just showed up? We don't know who it is, but they're sitting back there and they need praise me to God. What do they need tonight? God, I'm here for a reason. That's the excitement we need to get before we leave the house. When I leave this service to Tomorrow night we're having service over church. I'm excited already. What's going to happen over there when Brother Hunter breaks the bread? When it happens when they eat, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to them? Yeah. It's the truth. Amen. What's going to happen? What happened to that excitement? Come on. Come on. What happened to it? We stopped loving one another. Uh -huh. We stopped loving one another. I just, I just ain't. It just don't matter no more. It still matters to me. It still matters to me. But I've been there. I have. Been. I've overcome through Jesus. And because He overcome, you can overcome. And I overcome to show you that you can overcome. You can overcome. I can stand up here and say a lot of things, but I hope my life shows it. That's the thing. We can do a lot of things. The, dog, there's the main way you can explain the way you feel about Jesus is how you live your everyday life. The way you explain that you feel about your spouse is how you live your everyday life. The way you feel about your brothers and sisters is how you spend your everyday life. Remember that next time you're typing. Remember that next time you're huddled together somewhere, two or three. And it's time we can talk about each other. And not, I'm telling you, you and your wife or you and your husband can be talking about somebody. Amen. Do you believe that? Yep. You can be talking about somebody. Yep. Somebody's got to say, we better hush. It's about to turn into that. Yep. And get that done. Why? Because it's planted. Yep. And if take them, we'll go home. We'll feed our spouse things because we can just talk to them about anything. We'll feed them things that they shouldn't even know about. Amen. Shouldn't even know about. Amen. What they what they told you down the road or, or whatever. They don't even know. They don't even need to know that. That's why they ain't sitting in the house of God with those thoughts on their mind about Amen. that person. Amen. It's the truth. Amen. I've been guilty of it. I told you. I've been every word I'm talking about tonight. Yep. I've been guilty of it. But just keep your trap shut. You can handle it. They might not be able to handle it. Right. It might be something to take them to the bitter end. It might be the things that we're feeding our own spouses, our own kids, our own family. What our kids here say about people. What we go home talking about in the vehicle. What do they hear? They then and then they just start acting like that. It's the truth. How they gonna know? They gotta be taught. If they're taught wrong, they're gonna do wrong. If they're taught right, they're gonna do right. It's just the truth. Start tonight. Start tonight. Do it right. That's how you. That's how you fix things. 1 Peter 1, 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit to unfeigned love of the brother. Listen to that. Of the brother. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. 
Purified is the make clean. Unfeigned is genuine. Sincere without hypocrisy. They love you in the church building. And I got you on the parking lot. That's the truth. That's happening. Everything. Have you been guilty of it? Yes, I have. I told you, and I'll say it every time. Every time I'll answer it back. Yes, I've been guilty of it. It is. This is how I'm made free. This is how I know, praise be to God, that I can come over something. It's when a man or a woman can stand and say that was me one time. But now it ain't. Maybe somebody in the crowd can say, I'm doing it now, but I want to be able to stand where they're standing and say, it's not me no more. It's not me no more. But like I said, we can tell you anything, but I want my life to show it. I want my life to show it. Listen to this. Fervently, to stretch out the hand, to have that fervent love, to have that fervent, to be able to want to help and lift up. First Peter 3 and 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love his brother, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. Plum the opposite. Blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Compassion, to have pity on. Pitiful, tender heart. Courteous, kind, and friendly. Rendering, delivering again. Yes. Railing, slander, false statements about. Uh -huh. Slander, false, saying stuff false about. Amen. People say, well, I ain't talking about somebody if you're telling the truth. Watch how you're doing that. Amen. Watch how you're doing it because you can say the truth and do it in a way that you're talking about somebody. Yep. It's the truth. I'm telling you, because why? Just because you said the truth, what's going on in that other person's heart? What I've, I've been there, it's happened to me and I've did it before. Just because you're telling the truth and that's the truth coming out your mouth, you know. And God knows that it's the truth. But at the time that you spoke it and who you spoke it to and what it meant to them on the other side. It could have been gossip. It could have been, it could have been what you know in your heart they was going to get out of it. I'll just put it like that. Thank you, Jesus. You know what they're going to get out of it before you said it. You know there's going to be wrong in their heart, even though you said the truth. Yeah, it's true. I've, been, I've done it. Yeah. I've been guilty of it, and it's been done to me. Amen. I, I can say that tonight. It's the truth. Yeah. Lord, I love you, Jesus. This is how we're made free. 1 John 3. It says... It, or 1 John 4 and 7. We love, let us love one another. For love is, love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. 1 John 4 and 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. If he's in us, his love, this love is going to be perfected in us if he dwells there. You start asking the question, is God dwelling there? Is he dwelling there for this love to be perfected? He said be perfect for your Father in heaven is perfect. People are so scared of that word, perfect. But Jesus said it's so easy. The Bible speaks perfect so easy. I believe there is a perfect love. I believe there's a place that your mind can be perfect towards people in love. Can be that perfect. It, I know this flesh will mess up. It will just as much as we'll let it. We'll let it. A lot of times our flesh messes up because we let it. God's already spoken to our heart. And you know that's sin. That's sin. I'm talking about these men. We was talking about that the other night. It's, you take people and say, if you sin. Not when you sin. If you sin. We took it, they made that they took that part of the Bible. And when I sin, I'll just go to them. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I did it last week. He forgive me. I feel good about this. I told you little Thomas puts his shoes on backwards and says it don't feel wrong. But it's still wrong. He will. He'll look at me and say, it don't feel wrong. Why do I gotta change them? Why do I gotta switch them around? Because it just ain't right. Right's left and left's right. Put your shoes on right. Get your heart right. Get it to where it needs to be. Amen. That's all it's going to take in Jesus. This. 2 John 1. 
and four. I rejoice greatly that I found of my children walking in truth as we have received the commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which he had from the beginning. It started from the beginning. Amen. The love that he walked through the garden with, the love that when he seen just the aprons that they made on, and he took and made them coats of skin and put upon them. That same love that he had right there, they sinned against him right there. But that same love that they come and they give him a covering, they give him a way to sacrifice. Listen, that same commandment unto thee, that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. We've got to be walking in this love. Amen. Got to be walking in it. But, uh, listen, this ain't just a love that you give certain people. This is a love that you give everyone. This ain't a love for just our brother. And there's a place in the Gospels where it explains to us that when we take when somebody, one of our brothers or sisters does something for us, we'll go ahead and do it back for them. It's that don't even sinners do that. Oh, yeah. We think that's something uh -huh. when we give love for love to one another. Well, yeah. But what about that one out there that really, really don't like you? Really, really, you've heard things that they've said. Really, really, can you love them? You've got to ask yourself this tonight. Can you love them? Can you walk up to them and have this heart right? Can you truly do that? That's what that's a, that's what I ask myself. That's where I can I do that? I love. I tell you, love. You know me and my daddy. We don't. We don't. He don't see Jesus' name baptism right now. He's a coming. Don't do this, but he can call on me at any time. And I'll run down there. I can call him on any time. He'll come up there. I love him. I love him no matter what he says, what he does, no matter what I do or what I say. I know he loves me. And I love him. I love, I love those that don't love me. Jesus loved you. Even when you was yet in your sins, he died for you on that cross. Amen. Even yet when we know they don't love us, Brother Larry, we're to love them. Amen. We're to love them. When they holler at us and say, I need you, them thoughts will go through your mind. Look what they done. Look what they said. They don't deserve this. But what about Jesus? They smote me. They put a crown of thorns on my head. But the same ones, he said, looked out and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's the love that I want for my brother. And that's the love I want for the vilest sinner out there. The love for the rapist that's in the jailhouse tonight. The love for the murderer that's in the jailhouse tonight. That's the love that we need. He will save them all if they come to him right. He will. He'll save them all. Their sin can't get too big for him not to save. Can't do it. The Bible teaches that there's only one. Blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. And a lot of us, we don't even understand what that is. And that, I don't I just don't, I can't see myself doing it if I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't want to be held unexcusable for it, and I won't be. But I just, I can't just come out and tell you what blaspheming against the Holy Ghost is. I ain't learned that yet. I ain't. I'm just being honest with you. There's lots of things in this book I ain't learned yet. But I know one thing, and that's love. I know Jesus. And I know what he's done for me. And I know what he's done for you was pure love. And we need to show that to one another. If we're ever going to come together as a family in Jesus Christ, we need to love one another. I love you tonight with all my heart. I do love you. And I thank you. We're going to stick with the word. The men of God and the women of God are going to stick with this right here. Right here. The word. This is how I'm going to make it. This is how you're going to make it, is the Word of God. We need to stick with it with our kids, with our, employee, our employers, with our employees, the ones that help us at work. We need to stick up, stay on the Word. What if I lose my job, preacher? He's got a better one for you. What, what if I stand up, what if I just quote that scripture to him and, man, you're fired. He's got something for you. He does. He ain't going to let you go with that. And I, David said, he'd not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. 
We need to love one another tonight. Love, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your brother and your sister. Do it. Take it. Take it. Take it for them every now and then. Take it for them. As many times as it takes. That's what true love's going to do. It's going to take it. It's going to do what's right. It's going to do it according to the Word of God. I love, he's a good, the Lord's good. Yes. Well, let's catch ourselves in these places and back out. <coughs> say this is wrong. You say it to yourself. This is wrong. i got to back out of this. Look at it. When other people see you backing out, they'll start backing out. Mm -hmm. and we, when we start standing up for what's right, other people's going to start standing up for what's right. I've been guilty not to be the one to say something in the crowd. The other day. I've been the one that's been guilty to not go ahead and say it. And the Lord pounded on me. Won't you just tell them to hush? Let's just hush right now. Before it leads to something you're going to think about when you go to bed tonight. You're going to think about it the next church service. It's going to be there. But you know what love going to do? It's going to push you right through all that. It is. It is. He's going to restore. He'll restore what you need right in here to make it to that service with your brother or your sister. That, that hurts you. Or your family that hurts you. It's going to do it. It'll do it if you want it. I know it. It'll do it. It'll do it. I'm glad to be ignorant of some things. I've been told for this, or some things just people say about me or say to me, and I don't even catch it. I say, thank you, Lord, I didn't catch that. I ain't got no bad mitten up here, some big ball wanting to catch everything. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't got that. It ain't doing it. Sister Jamie said something to me. Her little boy called me today. And little Hezekiah called me on the phone. You know, you can sit there and just say they didn't know he had it. They didn't know it was laying her on. Hang it up. Hang it up. You won't hear it that way if they are. You won't have it in your knowledge if they are. You'll be able to walk up to them the same way you always did. Not saying that they would. I'm using that for an example tonight. Using that for an example. Does, it go through, does things go through your mind to go ahead and yeah, but you've got to back out. You've got to make yourself ready. Turn it off. Shut it out. Don't look at it. Don't handle it. Don't walk in that place. I love you tonight. We hope something helped you. I've enjoyed these past two nights. I've enjoyed every night that I've been here. And that's the truth. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the word, the fellowship. I love y'all. Y'all's my family. Do you hear me? You're my family. You're my brothers and sisters. And I want to make it with you. I do. No matter what it takes, I want to make it with you. People can place what they want to. But here's what I want placed. Right there. I want this placed. This is what matters. This is what matters. Like I told you, I'm not a smart, intelligent person. Didn't I? I quit school. I'd like to never got my GED thing to keep my job. Not very smart. But I know what the Spirit tells me. That's all I can go by. I know what the Spirit leads me to and how He wants me to go. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad. I ain't one that stands and, and can quote a bunch of scriptures. There are scriptures in there, but when you quote them, I know they're there. And you know, I don't know if that means anything or not, but when you quote them, I know they're there. I've, I've read it. I've heard it before. I've read it in His Word, and I know it's in there. But for me to stand and just quote a bunch, I'm just trying to help you tonight. Huh? Because I just, I, I just ain't, I just, I don't know. I do it the ability the Lord gives me. You do yours the ability the Lord gives you tonight. But don't use that for slackness. I don't use that for slackness. I'll go through the day, I'll get a scripture that I want to remember. I'll go through the day, I'll have it on my phone in the company truck. I'll go back to it. Lord, I want to be able to quote, I want to know that scripture. I'll go back to it. I'll keep quoting it in my mind. I think there's something wrong. I'll go back to my scripture to make sure I'm right. Go back. That's how hard some, some of us have to work for it to get it implanted in there. It just don't cut. Some people can see it one time and they'll remember the rest of their life to quote it. If anybody knows what I'm talking about. But I'll tell you, I, I strive to get what I've got in there. I do. I want it for Jesus. I want to be able to help somebody with it. And then I've been at times that not even have it on my mind if somebody asks a question. It's right there. If it ain't in there, you can't use it. But it's right there. Then you'll start wrapping them off. 
wrapping them off one right after another. I've been a, the Lord's amazed me sometimes, but get them in there. You've got to have them in there. You've got you to have that word in you for him to use it. The shell's got to be in a gun for you to pull the trigger and make anything active about it. It's got to be in there, implanted. I love each and every one of y'all tonight. I really do. I love you, and I thank you for listening. Thank you. If we didn't help you this time, we'll try to help you next time. Love each and every one of you.